Namaste. Now we get to the part of the introduction that I've been anticipating for a long time. Uh, these are the sweet holy names, the beginning of the holy names. And it's not the thousand and eight holy names yet. It's still the introduction. But he goes into these wonderful descriptions of Shiva using passages that are holy names and beautiful mantras, great powerful mantras. I'm going to pick up where we left off the last time. Sarva Mangala Mangalyam Sarva Papa Pranashanam Nigadishye Mahabaho Stavana Mutamang Stavam It is the most auspicious of all auspicious things and is capable of cleansing the heart from all sins, however heinous. O oh, you of mighty arms, I shall recite to you that best of all hymns. So the section just preceding this is about the glory of the Shiva Sahasranama. And, and this is really the summary and the uh, concentrated expression of that glory, which is that it is the most auspicious of all auspicious things. In the material world, we have to deal with time, past, present, and especially the future. Those who are awake, those who are intelligent, are always thinking about how to create the future, how to become the kind of being that I want to be. And, of course, the environment and the situation, circumstances and everything will come along with that. So if you want to be in association with Shiva or Shakti or any form of Godhead, that means you're going to the pure creation that creation which is never destroyed until the final Mahapralaya, at the end of the creation. Then everyone goes into Brahman and then comes out again in the next creation. So, why should we live in a dump? Why should we live in this sordid material world when we can live in the pure creation, in ecstatic relationship with God? And he is more than capable of uh, creating a form just for us to relate to. And he does. And this can be experienced by chanting his holy names, uh, not just for 15 minutes a day, but all the time. And when you get into that state, when you're linked with Shiva in yoga all the time, then he will manifest You'll, you, you can't believe it now because it hasn't happened to you, but I can tell you, he will manifest from within a special form just to relate to you in a certain flavor or mood of pastimes. And that's going to be um, who you are for the rest of the days of this world. So the value of this holy names <laughs> is that these uh, High-class spiritual bodies are assigned or given or revealed, actually, by merit, punya. So this is sarva mangala, of all auspicious things, right, mangalyam. This is, of all those auspicious things, this is the most auspicious. Sarva papa prasashanam, pranashanam, excuse me. It destroys all the sins in the heart. Sarva Pap. We all have so many desires for nonsense material things, thinking that it's going to make us happy. Well, it's not. <laughs> I mean, we might be happy for a couple of days, but then it'll wear off because everything in this world is impermanent and changing. So even if we get exactly what we want, which is extremely rare, <laughs> it wears away in time. So everything in this world is a disappointment. Give it up. Get out of here. Buy your ticket home. Uh, go back to where we can actually be happy. And that is in constant touch with Shiva. Then he says, Nigadishye Mahabhavo. Mahabhavo means greatly armed. Of the kings in those days, 
I mean, they were like a force of nature. They were so powerful. It's said that Arjuna, for example, could fight with 10,000 soldiers simultaneously, whether they were mounted on chariots like him or foot soldiers or on horseback or whatever. He could deal with 10,000 soldiers all by himself, hold them off or even defeat them. So this is the meaning of Mahabhavo, right? A great warrior. Stavanamuttamam. Of all the hymns in the world, stava is another name for him, like stotram. Uttamang stavang. This is the greatest of all the hymns in the world. So why would you not practice it? Why would you not hear and recite it? Why would you avoid this most auspicious thing, which gives the most auspicious destination, and that is a union with Shiva and living in his world, trouble-free, basically forever. Brahma nam apiyat brahma, para nam apiyat param, tejasam apiyat tejas, tapasam apiyat tapaha. This hymn relates to him who is the Veda of the Vedas, and the most ancient of all ancient objects, to him who is the energy of all energies and the penance of all penances. Now, here comes the holy names. Sweet, sweet holy names. <laughs> Brahma Napi Yad Brahma. Brahma here means the Vedas, teachings about Brahma. By Brahma, we mean Brahman, the ultimate absolute entity. So we're not talking about Lord Brahma, the creator. That's a different thing. But Brahman and the teachings of Brahman, the Vedas and especially the Upanishads, they teach directly of Brahman. Most of the Vedas and the rest of the Vedic literature, like the Puranas, teach indirectly about Brahman. They teach about the way to Brahman. But this is talking, the Upanishads are talking about Brahman directly. And when we chant Shiva's names, we come directly into contact with him. This has to be experienced to be appreciated. <laughs> so you could just sit there and chant this shloka. And once you learn it, once you get into it, once you put your heart into it, you will start to get reciprocation, immediate reciprocation, in the same manner as you approach him. So if you approach him with love and reverence, you get it back from him. If you approach him with servitude or friendship, uh, you get that attitude back from him. If you approach him as a caretaker, as a parent, or what to speak, as a lover, then he returns that mood as well. He reciprocates whatever. So this is God. See, this is the supreme. Not that you have to go through some arcane rituals or uh, elaborate initiation ceremonies or learn vast scriptures or anything like that. If you just chant his holy name, you get all benefits. Paranama biyat param. The param means the ultimate, the supreme, the topmost, beyond everything, transcendental. I mean, <laughs> yat param. Uh, tejasama te, yat tejas. Tejas means power, force. Yat tejas. So he is the most powerful of all powers, the most uh, strong of all forces. Because why? Tapasam apiyat tapaha. Of all penances, he is the greatest. Just to be in association with Shiva, just to contemplate Shiva, or what to speak of chanting his holy name or worshiping the Shiva Lingam in different ways, uh, this is all the greatest penance. Why? Because it leads to the greatest result complete emancipation from physical existence and 
permanent installation in the kingdom of God. What could be better than that? And that is the fruit, that is the result of chanting Shiva Sahasranam. Shanti namapiya shantir, duti namapiya jutehi, danta namapiyo danto, dimata mapiya chadhihi. To him who is the most tranquil of all creatures, endued with tranquility, and who is the splendor of all splendors, to him who is looked upon as the most restrained of all creatures that are restrained, and him who is the intelligence of all creatures endued with intelligence. So this, again, are the superlative qualities of Shiva. Shanti, he's the most peaceful of all. That's why he can sit and go into meditation, sometimes for thousands of years at a time. Huh? If he doesn't want to be bothered... If he doesn't want to have to deal with all this material stuff, you know, he just delegates all responsibility and just disappears, just goes into himself. Uh, contemplates Brahman, which is his own self. We can do this too. And this is how we achieve peace as well. Then, Dutinam apiya jutihi. Of all lights, he is the brightest. He's the greatest. He gives light to everything, and his light is the light of being, the light of existence itself. The pure consciousness of Brahman, unconditioned consciousness, pure awareness, huh? Turiya. This pure awareness, which has no object except itself, is the consummation of all spiritual life. And, and the, the joke is that we already have it, but due to wrong understanding, wrong living, and believing lies taught to us by others, believing the maya, basically, of the material world, we think we're the body, we think that we're the mind, we think we're the designations, the names and titles and qualifications that describe us, uh, but no, these are not the self. Neti neti. One should leave aside all these external things and find the essence within, the pure mirror that reflects everything up and including God and the universe and Brahman. So when Brahman reflects upon itself, this is Turiya, consciousness of consciousness, awareness of awareness. Pure, unconditioned existence. Satchit Ananda. See, it's a package deal. <laughs> With Sat, eternal existence and consciousness, Chit, you get Ananda, bliss. Just like when people go into Sushupti in deep sleep at night, they have a feeling of ineffable bliss. There are no experiences in Sushupti. There are no objects. There's nothing to experience except the self. That's why Ramana Maharshi said, those who are sleeping in Sushupti, in ignorance, are sleeping in the lap of Brahman, and they don't even know it. <laughs> so, Lord Brahma is associated with Jagra, waking consciousness. Lord Vishnu is associated with Swapna, dreaming consciousness. And Lord Shiva alone is associated with Sushupti. And Sushupti is the cause, the root out of which everything grows, the cause of all causes. And we've been over that in our series on God GPT, which you should also watch. And, uh, and there's just a few more verses and we'll get to the thousand names themselves. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shirwaya. <laughs>